Yeah. You know what? Can it's Daisy you? time. I, yeah. <laughs> I wonder who uh, is getting the Daisy Award. I hope it's Coco. <laughs> or it might be you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. See here, you might want to see her. Yeah, come right up here. Oh, <laughs> Is that my joke called this? Well deserved. Thank you. Because I talked to my sister this morning. She said a loud mouth. Oh, you knew? No, but Joe called my sister, and my sister lives in Texas. I was like, why are you calling my sister? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get this side Here, come here by me. Come here. This is well deserved. No matter what the letter says. No, no, no. All right. I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to tell you about Daisy because not everybody knows about Daisy and we haven't been down to the ED for a while, sadly. So I'm glad to be back. So the Daisy Award was an award that was started actually. I brought this book with me. Did I lose it's it It's right here. Okay. It, the first Daisy Award was given this month. 19 years ago in Seattle, so that's pretty cool. And this is a new book that they've just written about Daisy, so it's just, it's great timing. And so the Daisy Award was get, was um, developed, again, 19 years ago by a family in Seattle, by the, the um, family of Patrick Barnes. Patrick was a 33-year-old who, sadly, for about six weeks, had severe complications from IGP, <coughs> excuse me, and after many, many rounds of treatments, going to two different hospitals, um, did not make it. And um, the family talked about, of course, their grief in losing Patrick. He was a newly wed, fairly newly wed. He was a new father. Um, and so they tell the story that one night over a liquid dinner, they wanted to get together to talk about what they could do to honor the nurses. Because in that six weeks time, they expected the nurses to be smart. They expected them to be competent. But that what they didn't expect, is since I have this book now, I'll tell you their own words, what they said is, the nurses care for Patrick went beyond the patient and focused on the person. We were moved by the way our nurses touched him. There was a tenderness, a gentleness, and affection for Pat. They asked us to bring in a photo of him and taped it into the entrance of his room. That way, whenever anyone came in, they were reminded of the vital, healthy, handsome man, son, husband, friend, and new father who was in their care, not the intubated, prednisone-swollen man in the induced coma attached to all those tubes and monitors. They asked us about Pat, what he cared about, what he liked, and what he did for a living. And then they go on to say that they took just as much care of the families as they did Pat. So they started something in February of 2001 to say thank you to the nurses who give such compassionate care. Um, and they thought it would be a local award. It is now in every state across the United States and an international award. We give one a month, and this month, it's Amanda. Yay. Now, do you want to read this or you want me to read it? I don't know if I can get through it. I'd rather okay. you read it. Okay. <laughs> well, in case, you know, Daisy thinks of everything. <laughs> I'll take the tissues. There are probably, yeah, there are tissues in there. Grab them out. Okay. So, I would like to nominate Amanda Athen for the ED for the Daisy Award, and here's why. Recently, there was a young child on the ED as a boarded patient. Placement was proving to be very difficult for this child due to several issues. Remember this? Mm -hmm. He was all alone because his mother frequently left him for long periods of time. He wanted nothing more than to connect with someone. I was working in the ED the day Amanda was charged with caring for him. She spent much time with his patient, taking him out of his room on walks around the unit and finding things for him to do. She was patient and kind to this child, even when he acted out, which was frequently. Amanda spent much time on the phone attempting to contact the patient's mother in different long-term care facilities in order to find emplacement. Amanda did this with a constant smile on her face. She had so much empathy for what this child had been feeling that she even affected those around her to go out of their way to help spend time with this patient when Amanda was busy. That's the one there. <laughs> Amanda is the embodiment of a nurse. She never complains and is always looking for the solution to a problem of providing some of the best bedside care I have ever witnessed. So, so we can that. All right, comes with gifts, Daisy. So let's start those. You'll have a banner with your name on it for a month. That's pretty cool. 
which I know you'll hate, <laughs> that part of it, but it's pretty cool. I'm going to give you a copy of this book because it's hot off the press and I think you should have it. A portfolio signed by the Barnes family and myself, which I think is pretty cool. A pin that you can proudly wear. A little thing for your badge. And then Patty's got the Kleenex because you never usually a dry eye in the house, but you're doing all right. And then before I get to this, in the conference room, there are cinnamon rolls. And because they tell the story that um, Patrick's dad, one time when Patrick was still able to eat, brought one of those big ooey gooey cinnamon rolls, you know, the ones you get at the mall. Fully intending to eat it for himself, Patrick said, gosh, that smells good. I think I'll have a bite. Proceeded to eat the whole thing and said, Dad, you should bring those every day for the nurses. So we don't have Cinnabon, but we have high V. <laughs> That's the next thing. And the one thing the Barnes family does say, though, often is that, and we'll give Amanda time to speak here in a minute, but nurses often say, it's just my job, it's just what I do, and for every single time, what the Barnes family wants is for nurses, every time you smell cinnamon, taste cinnamon, bake with cinnamon, um, is that you think about what you do and how special it is, and it is more than just doing a job. The last gift, the Healer's Touch. This is a handmade um, statue by artists in Zimbabwe. There are 20 artists now, I read in the book, that helped to make these. Um, they are so honored to make these for Daisy because to them, the healers in their country are so important. Um, and they are honored to make this for Daisy and your artist has signed the back of it. And um, this is all the fun stuff that comes with Daisy. What do you want to say, Amanda? Oh, um, I mean, thank you. But I didn't ever wrote the letter. That's awesome. I mean, I did this with you yep. like seven years ago, so this is <laughs> a surprise. But I don't know. I don't know, I've been doing this a while, and we do a lot of nice things for people, and we do a lot of terrible things to people, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's nice that we're here and we can do it. Yeah. And so that you do it with a smile on your face. Table under the sheet, Mike and I did. Oh, thank you. That's where they're at. Fair enough. We'll get to those in a minute. So, how about a round of applause for a minute?